Go ahead, Jenny. Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to this evening's Finance Committee meeting. We are joined by um, Council Members Tom Poey and Richard Conti. I'm sure we'll be joined by more and we'll announce them as they come in. Um, we're also joined by our incredible staff, um, Danielle Gillespie, John Rafael Pichardo, Michelle Andre will be joining us momentarily as I just admitted her to the room. And there she is right on cue. Um, we're, tonight we're discussing Corporation Council's uh, budget and Marisa Francini is here to do that. And we're also joined by the incredible Nick Riley from the budget office. Um, I should forewarn everyone that I'm still kind of in a migraine thing. So um, Judy Deshay, uh, if for some reason I'm not able to continue, um, Judy said that she would be able to take over in uh, my stead. I appreciate um, so if I'm moving slowly and I missed your hand, it's not because um, I'm angry at you or any other reason. It's because I might not be able to see you and feel free to like nudge me in some way. Um, so with that, uh, Marisa, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Jenny. And I'm sorry you're not feeling well. Um, my, I'm having a little bit of technological difficulty, which I think is the theme of 2020. Um, and so someone else is going to I share my presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Danielle. Did you do that? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, for some reason, it wasn't opening on my laptop, only on my computer. So um, I have a short presentation about my budget, what's in my budget proposal this year. And then of course, we can have a conversation and I'll be happy to answer any questions about the department or the budget. Um, proposal specifically. Um, so the first slide just gives a little overview of the Department of Law's vision. And obviously this hasn't changed. For those of you who are familiar with this, we provide quality legal services to all the departments and agencies of the city of Albany. Um, and we have frequent interactions with the public and try to make sure that every member of the public is treated efficiently, effectively, and with the utmost concern of justice. So those are the goals we keep in mind in everything that we do here in the law department. Next slide. Thank you. Uh, so this year we have, I have some specific goals. Some of them, of those of you that have, have been around for a while are familiar. Um, some of them are new. So one of the goals that I have in mind for this year, the first one is to bring a lot of our labor and employment work in house. This has been the goal for a number of years um, and we're actually gonna make it happen. Um, our reduced services RFP has been posted and that has actually closed. So we're already in the process of retaining an outside counsel service for those reduced services. And at the same time, I'm in the process of hiring um, an attorney who specifically specializes in labor and employment law. Um, so that is in the works and I'm sure you'll have more questions about that later so I won't get into too much detail. Um, but our goals are as always is to raise salary in order to retain talent. We as always here in the law department have a very high turnover. Um, we lose, a, we, because of this, just the talent and the experience that attorneys get here in this office, we tend to lose them to the state, to other agencies, um, to other law firms because of the great experience they get here. So we always um, do everything we can to retain the talent that we, that we develop. And that includes um, act actively and aggressively trying to keep salaries on track with other agencies that are in the area. Um, so that we can compete. Um, another one of our goals this year is going to be to increase collections revenue and more efficiently sort of transform our code enforcement process. Um, as you remember, we did receive the city's RISE grant from the Attorney General uh, last year, and one of the positions that was funded by that grant was a, an attorney who specifically is going to be tasked with um, making the code enforcement process more efficient, more aggressively targeting um, bad landlords, 
bad property owners in the city so that we can um, keep buildings to be from, from ending up in that red X area. Um, we have hired that person, his name is Chris, and he started about a month ago. And so he's just getting his feet underneath him now. Um, codes, code enforcement court had been shut down for, um, I'd say four or five months completely. So he's, we brought him on just in time to get up to speed and he's been handling um, code enforcement cases as that court gets up and running again. Actually just today we had some trials for the first time. Um, so uh, that position has been filled and we are looking forward to exploring some new options as far as how, how we can optimize code enforcement here in the city and what we can do better. Um, so part of that is increasing the collections revenue. I already talked about retaining talent. Um, this is just an overview of our staff here at the department. I know we have a lot of turnover, so I just wanted to give you guys an idea of who's with us currently. Um, some names are familiar and some are probably new. We do have that vacancy in the labor and employment law position, which was left when Peachy Jones, um, yay Peachy, was promoted to being our HR director. So that was a great loss for, the, for us here, the law department, we miss Peachy. Um, so we're currently trying to fill her shoes with a labor and employment specialist, but everyone else has been here for, well, Chris, I just talked about, he's our, our grant funded position. Administrative staff you're mostly familiar with. The, and then, no, it's okay, you can keep, go forward. Um, this is a little snapshot of the salaries in the proposed um, 2021 budget. The highlights are um, the promotions. Well, actually you can flip forward to the next slide. Um, we'll, we'll get into the highlights of the salaries in, in one of the next ones. So if you can see here on this slide that our um, expensive litigation has gone down significantly to from $494,000 to $365,000. We've estimated that we, our goal is to cut our labor outside council labor costs by about 50%. Um, and then we've taken some of that money um, that savings and put it into increasing some salaries, um, which we'll get into on the next slide. Um, the leadership positions here at the department um, proposing raising by 5%. Um, there's some, co some comparable salaries from around the state and different municipalities that I included on this slide just to give you a um, some, comp some comparables to see what other people in those positions were making. Um, and then uh, there were a couple of promotions within the department. We have Laura, who is uh, the going to now be promoted to a second assistant corporation counsel, going from, from the starting salary of 68 to 73.5. And then we have the addition of a senior assistant corporation counsel. Um, and that promotion is for Amy. Levine, who is our planning and land use attorney, um, getting that um, going from 72 to 75. Um, the, as far as the Corporation Council and the Deputy Corporation Council raises, you know, I looked back historically and the positions hadn't been, haven't been given a raise besides the COLAs um, going back as far as I could tell. So we've been consistently raising the Assistant Corporation Council salaries. Um, and I really thought that my deputy deserved to be bumped up and myself um, just compared to other um, similar positions and also in terms of the increased responsibility we're taking on um, bringing that labor relations work in house is um, not going to be will be the inclusion of uh, additional workload um, and additional supervisory capacities for both of us. So that's reflected here in the 5% proposed raise. Um, next slide. So 2021 new initiatives, I already talked about. Um, I'm in the process currently right now um, of hiring a labor relations attorney and significantly paring back on those outside council services. Um, we currently pay about $11,000 a month retainer 
plus hourly rate for labor related litigation outside of our retainer agreement. We've already begun bringing in some of that hourly labor related litigation work in house um, with the current staff we have. I have great staff who has like thankfully dived into a brand new area of law that many people are not familiar with, but um, everyone has sort of taken on some of that labor work. And so we've already begun bringing some of that in house and hopefully that will continue when I get the labor relations attorney um, position fully filled. Next slide. So revenue anticipation and grant opportunities. I already talked about our code enforcement attorneys attorney, which is grant funded. Um, this is a grant that we received for two years. That's effective September 8th, 2020. That was the higher date uh, of Chris. Um, we're anticipating that the position is going to fund itself by the increased revenue and collection fees that we um, can bring on having a person completely devoted to code enforcement and strategic collections of code enforcement penalties. And that's all I got, because I figure we could um, probably have a lot of questions. So I'll turn it over to you guys. Uh, I just want to notice some other council members. Uh, committee member Judy Deshay is here. Um, we also have Joe Igo, Uwusunane, and Kelly Kimbrough. Um, do we have any questions from, or Judy, do you have any questions since you're the committee member that's here? Yes, I do. Um, First, first and foremost, I'm, I'm perplexed, uh, amazed that we have a significant um, budget increase uh, here um, for uh, the Corporation Council and the um, Deputy Corporation Council. Um, and with a comment being made, you looked back and um, as far as you can tell, you've only, that position has only gotten the colas. That is what other people have only gotten through, throughout most of our employees and many of them have not even gotten that, uh, have not even gotten that. So this position has been increased by uh, you know, for COLA from like 2017 to 2018 was a 2% increase. 2019 was a 1% increase. 2020 was a 1% increase. Um, and I, um, and I'm also bothered by um, looking at the comparisons that have been provided to us uh, because they are clearly not the full picture as I have looked at things. Um, the, the number that you have provided for the Corporation Council for the City of Rochester, um, that's of a salary range, correct, Marisa? Um, no, that was, well, that was the position listed in their, that was the money listed in their budget book. I had, um, my administrative assistant looked that up, but I believe it that was the that was the salary. The the budget book provides a salary uh, budget line, um, and uh, the corporation council is at VR thirty six, which goes from ninety two thousand dollars at the start to over fourteen years, then to one hundred and twenty one. 1,900. So what you've done is, I, I mean, excuse me, 141, 522. So what you've done is listed the top, which is over a 13 to 14 year um, experience, bump, you know, annual bumps up in the way that people do for the, for the state. So I think that is misleading. Um, I will note that in Kingston, there's two attorneys on staff. 
and the current Corporation Council there has 21 years of experience. Uh, and the total with it. Well, they also have a population of 22,000. So it's, you know. Well, that's interesting that you note that because you're the one who put the, the, the comparison in there. Yeah, no, I, I wasn't trying to, you know, paint a certain picture. I was just trying to say, you know, the king, they're at 100,000 and I don't think one uh, 12 is uncomparable considering the size of a population and the workload and the number of staff that I manage. So Rochester, um, like I noted, even the, you know, the starting salary there for this position is well below the 112 that you're asking, uh, that you're putting in here. I will note that their entire um, budget for Corporation Council is a little over $2 million. That includes contractual services. Uh, and we have a budget of almost $1.6 million in Corporation Council's office. Um, so, and their population is basically double. So if we want to then go on the basis of let's look at the population in the city as a comparison factor, then let's look at the fact that um, they are double the population and um, maybe that's not an appropriate comparison. Schenectady, their corporation councils paid $100,000 a year. Their population is 66,000. Uh, their deputy is paid $86,000. Now that's in our area and they're competing with the same um, potential um, draws for talent as we are. Their total law department is $748,000. So that's half, but they have two thirds the amount of population that we have. Troy, Corporation Council is eighty-seven thousand dollars a year. They right, have, but, nine, but they have part-time. They're all part-time, though. That's a full-time position. Their deputy is thirty-two thousand dollars a year. Um, they're, they're definitely part-time, but I believe they all—they're all, all part-time. Okay. Well, um, so you're saying at $87,000, that person is only part-time, that's not a full-time position in the Corporation Council? Uh, I am pretty sure that all of their Corporation Councils are part-time, but I, I can confirm that for you. And I know that their budget is just a million dollars, including um, all consulting services and salaries. Um, Kingston, yeah, well, you don't want to count Kingston, you put Kingston in the total. I mean, I, considering what we are dealing with as a, as a city, to all of a sudden have anybody say, oh, I should have a 5% salary increase because I have only gotten the colas, like everybody else has only gotten the colas. Is that going to be our bargaining position as you're negotiating contracts with unions? No, Judy, that's not, that's not, that wasn't my argument at all. My argument is that I'm bringing down my department's overall budget and I'm bringing in more work and more staff for me and my deputy. So I think it's fair that we take some of that savings and because we have brought our assistant corporation council positions up more than the colas that we haven't brought the leadership positions up accordingly and this year because we're taking on more work more staff more responsibility um, a whole new area of law that i was never involved that the leadership here was never involved in before um, i i think it's deserved at this point so you are going to be drafting the contracts? You're going to be overseeing the drafting of the union contracts? Is that 
what I understand. We're going to be doing the negotiations in house. So we will, yes. Which is something the council has asked to be done for years and years and years. So, well, and, and that, and that is true. Like, right? and we're reducing uh, our budget and we're taking that work in house because we think we can do a better job at it at a cheaper rate. So then the question is, um, for expensive litigation, you're reducing it by, we can't say what is $110,000 a year. Yes. In order to find the money for these raises. In the meantime, my understanding is you have asked the common council to chip in for expense of litigation because you don't have the money in your budget to cover. No, that's not costs. true. Um, that for this year, for 2020, we added on a new expense of bringing in a different outside council, a nationally renowned utilities attorney to help us get the best franchise agreement possible. And I thought that because the council wanted to be heavily involved in that negotiations that you might want access to that attorney and that you might want to pitch in. I didn't, I, I'm not walking around with a tin cup. We found the money, we retained the attorney, but you, I- You found the money within your budget? Yes. Or, did the, or did the city find it in contingency or elsewhere? No, we found the money within our budget and I negotiated the contract. I'm sorry? What was no, we found the money within our budget and I negotiated the contract in order for it to be reasonable to, so that it would fit in my budget. And how often have we gone over budget in the last two or three years with regard to um, what has been allocated for contractual expenditures in general for Corp Council? I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. Because I am concerned that that amount is being reduced in this budget. And I have no objection to hiring somebody, bringing somebody in to do the um, negotiations with the unions. But I do have concerns about um, uh, using that money in this day and age when the when the city is facing a, a significant tax increase for the taxpayers and we have a lot of ifs in our um, in our budget for next year and we're asking everybody else to hold the line essentially so everybody to else to, chime in, the line. to chime in there um, we had gone around at the at, during when COVID hit and we were looking at all the departments in terms of what are areas that they can either reduce or be innovative with their departments to generate revenue. And when we were discussing this with Marisa, uh, she brought up this, this concept, the contracted services line was reduced by the amount equal to Romer's retainer. So that's, that's the reduction that you're seeing in their contracted services line. So everything else is holding steady. Um, they have that city's rise position, which is making it look like in the budget, that it's it's break even, but that's that's reimbursed. So they're actually seeing about a five to ten percent reduction in their budget. And over the next two years, while that grant is active, we're going to see how that position, both financially and operationally, affects codes revenues and codes operations. So in, in terms of uh, in terms of the law department's budget, it's it's actually decreasing. In terms and of how state. many other department heads are getting a five percent increase this year? Well, I mean, it, it's it's essentially the risk that the corporation council is is taking because they're they're taking all these services in house. They're going to be handling all of this. I mean, that, that's a lot of work to take on, and you know, you know, with with that comes a lot of responsibility. There's so there's Nick, Nick, okay. the answer to the question is, I believe the answer to the question is zero with yeah. regard to next year's budget. I don't mm -hmm. even know of any deputy positions that are seeing an increase in, in the budget. I think an exception for increases in management positions is somewhere around the realm of about five positions in the entire budget outside of corporation council's office. Mm -hmm. And those are for very specific changes of responsibilities uh, is what um, I have heard during the uh, presentations. Um, 
So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to end my questions for now right there. Thank you. Um, thank you, Judy. I would just uh, add that I have similar concerns as we go into this budget year about um, increases um, in staff or increases in salaries. And Tom, your hand is up. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to see the uh, the in-house negotiation. Um, you know, we're going to do those uh, negotiations in-house as one of the members who have been harping that we really should be negotiating with our employees. Um, I did have a chance to sit down with the mayor uh, maybe six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, and I mentioned to her, um, I'm a statewide union official for UUP. We represent 44,000 uh, people who work at SUNY. And even though we have a contract, the state can give a raise at any time, uh, not using, you know, not negotiating, just say, you've been working hard. And I mentioned to the mayor that, um, you know, for the police, could we get them like a 1% raise or do something because it's been years because of their union problems. It's not the city's problem, but it's something internal. But we have policemen out there uh, they're down close to 80. We're waiting for this other class to, to graduate. But, um, you know, for morale purposes and stuff, uh, I'm going to bring it up with you. Uh, if you are doing that, uh, the mayor felt it would be illegal. But again, I'm telling you as a, a, an official of the union, I don't believe it. But again, contracts for different unions are different. So um, if, I'd like you to look at that. Uh, my other question is, I've been trying to get uh, a resident in my, my ward wants to buy a paper street. And I'm in, it's been at least six months, maybe seven months. Um, I keep bugging JR to send out a, a you know, where are we at? Um, how long should it take uh, to be able to do an estimate and get us the information on, uh, so we could, you know, help this resident out? You know, get a paper street what's like a reasonable amount of time to wait yeah selling city property um is one of those things i think that was unexpectedly takes up a lot of time and energy here at the law department it, it is it is quite the process um if you'd want to connect me to the person i'd be happy to look into it it all depends really on if there's any sort of assessed value um if there if it's on the if it's already if there's already an assessed value um on the rolls then we and everybody agrees to use that value then we can we don't have to necessarily get an independent appraisal um sometimes people want to get their own independent appraisal or we want to get an independent appraisal or we need to get an independent appraisal because it's just not on, on the tax rolls already so that can take additional time so there's a lot of variables um at, at that point it goes to the technical review committee so that each department has a chance to take a look at the property, decide if there's a water main underneath it, see if there's any reason that any department would need access or would not want to sell that property or it has use for the property, because it's actually illegal for us to sell a property if there's any use for any like municipal use for that property. Um, at that point, if it's approved internally, it would go to the Common Council, uh, ideally to the member themselves. We usually tell the applicant to uh, approach their Common Council member to um, let them know that they're interested and, and seek their approval. Um, and then, you know, that can take some time as well. So there's a lot of variables, but variables, that's a little overview of the process. Um, Sarah on our staff here has been great. She's been assigned to handling the many land transfers that we do so we can get them connected and get it moving, um, or at least get them an answer. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry, Richard. Thanks. Um, thanks, Marissa. Um, I want to get back to uh, the retainer uh, issue. So, so I, what I heard was that Romer is no longer being retained and we're going to do their work in house. Um, we will still have a labor relations attorney on contract, an outside counsel. Okay. Um, we will be taking most of the negotiation piece in-house. 
Okay. So we will, because, you know, this is a new area. So I still want to have someone on contract if we need outside counsel, if we need advice, if we need, um, you know, have overwhelming a number of disciplinary matters on our, on our hands that we can't handle in house. So we're still going to have a firm on contract. Um, they will be, it will be for a reduced amount of services and therefore it will be for a reduced retainer. I'm estimating about half the price. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if it will be Romer or not. That hasn't is been. That an, is an RFP out on that or is that something you would RFP? It was out. It actually right. closed. We have all the applications or, or the proposals right now that we're looking at and okay. internally. Okay. And I have no problem with that. I think that an outside council does bring a level of resources that we might not have. Yes. And that you would, might want to fall back on. Can you, um, what are the other retainers we have and their scope? Sure. Um, so the only other retainer agreement we have is for um, civil litigation and civil rights litigation, mostly federal litigation, and that's Steve Rafus. Mm -hmm. We have a flat monthly retainer with him. He handles um, all of the federal litigation. It's mostly police related. That's his specialty. Um, and then the other firms that we have on contract are just at, on an as needed basis. So if we need a particular environmental um, lawsuit, we have people that specialize in that, um, but we don't necessarily pay them unless we have a need. Okay, so the 365 includes the retainers we have with, with Steve Rafis and whatever we're doing with the, the labor contract. And then the others that you have out, you don't have retainers, but you have firms that are used as needed and that expense comes out of the expense of litigation line. Correct. Okay. Um, and you also mentioned uh, a, a, uh, an outside attorney we uh, retained for the uh, the franchise agreement? Yes. Okay, which expires at the end of the year. And I don't know what the plan is right now as far as I assume possibly extending that. Oh, oh, the franchise agreement. I thought you yeah. meant the contract. Um, All so the franchise. We contacted the PSC just to make sure and our outside counsel assured us that, so for instance, Troy's franchise agreement has been expired, was expired for 10 years. So I oh. guess it's pretty, pretty common for these. Um, yeah. they, I think they, our current one was expired for a while before we entered into the, our 10 year agreement. Right, it basically holds over until there's a new one mm -hmm. in place. So we, um, we formed a committee. Some of you are on it. Yeah, I was wondering if that committee has met. It has. It has. Yes. Is that the is that the uh, the work group? Um. Yeah. I think I think it's called a work group. Um, yeah. No. I because I have your letter from June twenty third inviting me to participate in it. So Richard, I shouldn't be so I shouldn't be, be asking if it, if it's met. Yeah. I'm sorry about that, Ginny. I can't remember who. I think we've been Richard was. Yes. Richard. Yes. I, I was there, and we did meet. When did we you met meet? once uh, a couple of um, weeks ago, actually. I don't have the exact date, but I was for Jared to kind of put you on the list, I guess. For you Richard, to I apologize email. if you were if you were supposed to be included in that. And well, I got, this I got is it. actually a conversation that we had before, because when you sent the letters, I called you and said, I'm not supposed to get a letter. Richard is. And so that's why you sent him the letter. But obviously you didn't tell people. Um, so if, if you can make sure he's on the list, that would be great. Yes. Yeah, I, I did get a survey from Jared about potential meeting dates, which I responded to, and then I never heard anything further on it. So I, I guess I was waiting for something, but I apologize. I, I will about that. I will follow up, and uh, I will. I did get an email me. subsequent also about items which I was wondering, you know, that were discussed or re potential recommendations. I didn't know where they came from because there was never a meeting that I was aware of, uh, which apparently there was. And I don't know if Alfredo was there. Um, he was. Yes, okay. Alfredo was there. So it was the three of us were the ones. And again, I don't uh, recall ever getting anything on it. So. Again, I, I'm sorry, I don't know where the miscommunication was, but I will send yeah. you the presentation that we went over that that day. And I'm happy to talk to you offline and fill you in on anything you missed. OK. Um, I think that's all I have right now. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions? Go ahead, Arusun. 
Yes. Um, first, I just want to thank you for all the work that you're doing. And also want to thank your office for all the work that you guys are doing um, in these challenging times. Um, you know, over the past couple of years since I've been on the council, one of the things that we have advocated for and also I've advocated for and, you know, my good friends in the past who used to be on the council advocated for is how do we uh, deal with labor negotiations in house? And it seemed like you're taking that step forward. And I'm, I'm quite frankly, I'm pleased to see it. I know there are some people that are, have, some, have some concerns as it relates to the raises, but in my opinion, I think that if you're going to be taking on uh, some of these uh, you know, negotiation opportunities, individuals should be compensated for it. You know, there's a saying you can't have your cake and eat it too. And we, we've all on the council have been advocating for negotiation contracts to be done in house. Um, and now some people have some concerns, but that's not here or there. Uh, my question more so is uh, the position that is currently vacant. Can you tell me a little bit about that position and what is going to be different? I, I thought that position also deal with labor negotiations um, and just kind of just do a compare contrast and just tell me what would be different from that position uh, with this new uh, initiative that you you plan on uh, moving forward. Sure. Yeah. Um, it it is it is similar you know it's it's peachy's position peachy has moved on to be a department head um so what she did was a lot of the disciplinary um hearings and negotiations that come from every department um every department has their own procedure their own union contract that they follow when it comes to discipline so that takes up a large amount of our time this person would also be tasked with um working with Mike Wheeler and the budget department on uh, all of the labor negotiations contracts, um, or most of them, I should say. There are a couple that are still gonna require some outside advice, but that is to be determined. Um, the person would be charged with um, doing all of our arbitrations in front of PERB, um, handling all the grievances that come from the contracts and the improper practice challenges that we receive on a regular basis. So it, it's a big workload. I'm really looking for someone who has some labor experience that can come on and really jump in to that position. Um, I have the budget line at 85. I'm hoping to not have to use all of that, um, but I need to, I, I, do, I do think it's important to have someone that um, has some labor and, and employment experience to can jump in that position, especially since we're reducing our outside council services. So um, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next question more so, uh, diversity. Uh, you know, city government, very too often people talk about diversity, diversity, diversity. Um, but when you look at city hall, uh, you know, when you look at high paid jobs within city of Albany, it's typically not black and brown people in those positions. When it comes to your department, can you talk a little bit about what are some of the efforts that you have done to try to diversify your office? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, it, that you actually kind of read my mind. It's something I'm sort of, I'm very conscious about. Um, you know, I, we, we are very good at, I think, recruiting and training very talented people of color and black people. And then they always seem to get promoted. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, it's happened to us with over the, with like three people that I can think of off the top of my head, but it's something I'm always striving for. Um, it, it, it's really hard. It's really hard to recruit and keep good people. And it's something that we struggle with at the law department and especially for people, um, people of color and black people and, and attorneys in particular. Um, the Bar Association, you know, has an internship program um, a, a diversity internship program that I'd love to be a part of, but they won't let me in. They only place people with private, private firms and private companies. So um, I, I'm still, I'm, I'm trying, to, you know, the old fashioned networking and recruiting and word of mouth, uh, always welcome help if you, you know, know any aspiring attorneys that want to come here. So um, it's something I'm very self conscious of and um, always striving to do better with hiring and, re and promoting and recruiting and training a more diverse staff. Thank you. Um, and also, I want to ask a question about with the RISE grant that we're receiving as relates mm -hmm. to building and codes. Uh, what are some of the, and is, is it Rob McGee that will be overseeing that type of position or who's in that position now? Rob is overseeing um, the, the city's rise person who we hired, Chris. So 
you know, I, I oversee all of them, but Rob, um, Rob and Chris work closely together on the codes issues. Um, so yeah. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Melissa? Uh, go ahead, Joe. Hi. Well, as most of you know, I've been fighting for uh, with past administrations, trying to keep the salaries up there because I've seen so many great attorneys, young attorneys leave as soon as they had some a chance to jump in any money and they need it. They need it because they have young families also. Uh, one of the biggest steps was I, it was hard getting it through a, a former deputy mayor, but uh, having, having step foot in there, okay? Like attorney, what, I know there's some left over, I think they're changing a little bit, but you know, different steps for first, two, whatever. And I'm glad that has, I think worked out, it's helped a little bit, but we're still up against the state and, and the money. Uh, as far as the discussion, I think Judy and you had a little while ago about not seeing raises on, on other commissioners and things, that's not true. I think at the start of this administration, uh, DGS got some pretty hefty raises. Chief of Police got one hefty raise just to get him in to come to this city. It was by far the largest raise I've ever seen in the city. But uh, hopefully a lot of these things will work out. Now, for years we had uh, part-time attorneys. Actually, I think my first year in, they did away with them. And there was discussion whether we'd save money and we could get someone which might be good as a labor uh, employment attorney. Has that, was that ever discussed or was it just excluded because of part-time positions? Yeah, no, that is an idea that I've sort of been thinking about. Um, I, have, I have a couple applicants that have pretty good labor and relate, labor and employment um, experience right now. So I'm sort of exploring those options first, but a, a part-time person is, a, is I think a really good option. Um, so it's definitely something we're gonna consider. Because say, say if you have all, I mean, if, if things turn good again, okay, and we get all these uh, labor negotiations, contracts put in place, I mean, this guy could have them all done then nothing for three years. And what does he do then? Hope for uh, disciplinary things, or if this attorney you're hiring, will he be able to do help out in other ways? It's, it's not a full time, you know, position just negotiate. Well, no, I'd say I think you're right. The, just the negotiations wouldn't be, but we have a tremendous amount of discipline, um, grief, uh, grievances, uh, union grievances, and IP charges where um, that are all the time. We have a lot of police discipline. Those arbitrations are very, have a, a really heavy workload. I mean, it's like doing a full trial. Um, so you'd be surprised. It's every department has their own particular discipline, issue, discipline issues. Um, and then there's also the whole, just the like general labor and employment law questions. So like our payroll and HR, um, we're constantly trying to keep up with all of the new federal regulations on FLMA and the governor's orders and payroll taxes. And there's all sorts of legal questions that come out of each department um, regarding labor law. So you'd be surprised. It's, it's a pretty heavy workload. Okay, another question. Uh... Rick LaJoy brought up in our meeting the other night some of the things that he wants to get going. One of them is about changing the uh, ROPs back down to, was it 24 months? He wanted 18 months. Uh, is that, lit is that uh, ordinance being worked on right now? Is I'd like to get it ready before the first of the year because I think we're losing an opportunity and we're losing money. And I forget what the other one was he wanted to change. But yeah, yeah. I'm doing some things administratively, et cetera. Yes, we um, we are looking, taking a look at possibly taking our code enforcement proceedings administrative. Some other cities do that. Um, we're taking a close look at it and seeing if it could work here. Um, and then as far as the legislation goes, that's something that Rob and Chris have been working on a package of like landlord tenant related bills that you will see soon. They had a big hearing meetings. I don't know, oh, so you're shaking your head if you were you were participating in that. Um, I am they, actually. Uh, they, they got a lot of landlords and tenant groups together to talk about these proposals. Um, some of the landlords pushed back on that particular proposal that you're talking about moving the ROPs 
to a shortened time frame. Um, but the, the, you are going to see those proposals soon, and, and I'll, I'll follow up with you um, after at a later point if you want to see them in more 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 specifically. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Augusto, did you have another question? Yeah, just a, real, a really fast one um, regarding the question that Igo was asking as relates to if uh, once we uh, negotiate our contracts, if you have staffers, uh, not saying they will have free time, but right now we have uh, JR, who's our counsel. Uh, he does a lot of work. He introduced legislation for us. He researched. There's a whole host of things that he does. And I think sometimes uh, the workload is a little bit heavy. When it comes to, um, and currently he's the lowest paid attorney in the city of Albany and the only person of color in the city of Albany. So I just want to put that on the record. But as it relates to like taking some of the, the work off his, off his plate, is there somebody in your office that could deal, help the council with legislation or even introduce or even when we pass ideas that that's able to do some of the legislation for the council, if you could speak on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Brett is around and available. Um, you know, we keep him busy with other things as well, but I'm sure that he'd be happy to help JR if there's something specific or there's a specific ordinance you guys need help with. Yeah, we could absolutely jump in. Can council members give direct like ideas to Brett to introduce the legislation or just research it? Sure. Like what I'm just trying to figure out what our relationship is with the council, uh, with Corp Council as it relates to introduction of legislation or any legislative ideas. Yeah, you can run things by Brett and, uh, and ask him questions. Yeah, you're right. welcome to reach out to him directly. Th thank you so much. In the past, uh, different attorneys in the Corp Council actually used to do the draft of the funds and then pass them up because they had more experience on it, okay? And get things done a lot faster, whether it was Patrick or uh, Jeff or whatever. For me. Yes, yes, you for a while there, right? <laughs> but so you know, okay? And, yeah. Uh, Things worked out well, sometimes a yeah. lot smoother. Uh, as you look at each other's thing, pass it back and forth, you aren't doing lottery number and read, you know, you have, you have more experience, at least in drafting that maybe JR has. But at least yeah, absolutely. You know, we should, it should be a partnership and, you know, I'm sure Brett and JR have a relationship and Brett, Brett's happy to, happy to assist where he can. Thank you. I have a great working relationship with Brett. He's amazing. <laughs> great, good. Um, it, Judy, I, go ahead. Oh, you're muted. You're muted, Judy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, so my understanding is that Corporation Council is our council, that that is by law, um, your relationship to our council, and that indeed that there are plenty of cities uh, around the state that do not have an attorney on staff, partially because they simply rely on corporation council. So with uh, Mr. Anani um, asking that question, I just wanted to make clear that um, I, I don't think that there should be any kind of dividing line. Um, uh, what has happened during my time on the council is um, that sometimes people um, will feel more comfortable um, asking um, somebody in corporation council's office for assistance. Barbara was part-time. Um, for uh, for the first, and she was our counsel for the first, I think, four years that I was on the council. So, um, the, so we absolutely had to rely on uh, corporation counsel's office, um, and I do think that there are sufficient legislative issues and legislative ideas um, that we should be addressing. One of the things I would love to see us do is get rid of some of the absolutely antiquated and outdated provisions uh, in the code. Um, and that is actually something I would love to have somebody uh, in your office, um, you know, take a look at and see if there are, you know, sections that we can just simply um, do away with. I mean, so, some of them, you know, date back to, I want to say like, you know, the 1800s, I yes. think. 
Yes, there there are sections about horses and stuff. And it's funny you say that when when we were all home on lockdown, I I had uh, assigned we had some downtime because the courts were closed. So I had assigned um, everyone as part of the code to review just to do what we call a cleanup. So we've actually started that process and um, I, I will go on record <laughs> to make you a promise this year that we will, we will at least, we should at least do, it's overwhelming to do all at once, but we should at least introduce a section of it to you like this, this upcoming year. Um, Cause it is something we've been thinking about and, and working on. Great. Great. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think it, is, it absolutely would be overwhelming to do all at once, but I think that we, there, we can take pieces of it, you know, oh, you know, um, you know, I want to say chapter by chapter, what, I think that there's like 140 chapters or something like that. So even if we had like, you know, three chapters, uh, you know, introduced each month, um, I think that that would be very worthwhile. Um, I yes. hear this periodically from constituents, but more so actually from administrative staff in different departments that kind of make fun of the Common Council because we're not going in and doing some corrections for these things that are that are antiquated. Um, and I think, and in some cases, we have stuff that is internally inconsistent and makes things um, confusing because of it. And I don't necessarily want to tackle those first, but some of, you know, but anything, anything yeah. that would break. Actually, it's interesting, Judy, that you bring this up because Danielle and I had just recently found this old document that we had paid ECODE to do exactly what you're saying. It was before my time and who knows how much we paid because we asked them how much would it cost for you to do this now? And it was a, a good sum of money. Um, but it's interesting that, you know, everyone, people have been trying to do exactly what you're saying for a long, long time, um, but we'll, we're going to make it happen. We're going to do a cleanup. We'll get there. Well, if you do that, then I'm glad to have you have the raise. Oh, it's that easy. I'm on it, Judy. I'm on it. We will get that moving. Now I'm motivated. So. Yeah. <laughs> and send you. me all the legislation, though. <laughs> no, it's something that needs to be done, and it's on our radar. So it, I appreciate you pushing us. Are there, are there any other questions? Um, I, Marissa, I just wanted to thank you so much for all the work that you do and your team does. We really appreciate you and um, everything Corp Council does. Um, and I apologize if I am, you know, my migraine is impacting my uh, perkiness, but um, another time I will wax poetic about how awesome no, you guys are. No, no, no. Definitely please. really appreciate you and all the work that you do. Oh, thank you, Jenny. I thank you for saying that. And I appreciate you. And I hope you feel better. Yeah. We just have to get through this budget thing. I'm sure Nick has uh, migraines too sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that we're supposed to have a, um, a budget discussion as well. Marisa, if you want to, you, do not need to stay any longer. Um, I'm not sure if anybody, I will say I'm not at uh, as great as I normally could be to lead a budget discussion. Um, I will note in the numbers that were sent over, there was a raise for the auditor in there and that's, um, we actually can't do, that can't be part of the budget. Um, any elected official in the city of Albany has to, um, you can't raise this up. Richard probably can. Was that for the auditor or was that for- was, a There's a position called the auditor. It's not yeah, the chief auditor. Okay, then auditor. that makes yeah. sense. Okay. All right, I was I was going to say, unfortunately we can't, uh, we can't do that, but just a position called the auditor. Okay, that makes sense then. Um, and I'm not sure if anybody wanted to discuss uh, those that information that um, Nick Blay sent around. If not, then I'm going to close the meeting and I'm probably going to climb into bed. <laughs> so, uh, go ahead, Richard. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking, although we are getting to the point 
where we need to start formalizing recommend or begin to get recommendations out there. Um, and I, I assume we're targeting our November 16 meeting as the date we want to pass things. So probably um, if individual members have items, suggestions, areas, or whatever, they should start getting that in. Even if we're not discussing it tonight or anything like that, but maybe uh, that might be something to put out there for people. Absolutely, thank you for that, Richard. Um, and I'm just gonna, Michelle and JR, if you guys could help me remember that tomorrow so we can send that out um, to kind of ask members if there's anything um, different than uh, was in the budget than um, or recommendations that they want to make or areas and yeah what Richard said also um, for the bond ordinance I did send out that chart if anybody has any suggestion for like you know edits or changes in the numbers because um, I did send um, also the open accounts looking at some of the balances I know Judy's usually pretty good with that um, seeing in different places where we might have to reduce some of the requests. Um, you, you know, last year around this time, we already had um, some recommendation. Um, so I think by next week or the next two weeks, you're gonna have to really start filling that up because um, they do take time and it's time consuming for the edits. So I have to start looking at that. Hello. Can you hear you, Judy? <laughs> can um so i just opened up the budget amendment um sheet and there's quite a few things on there i think that we didn't we haven't discussed i think the, I, I think this sheet comes from um, the division budget, or the budget department. Yes. Um, for um, it, this would be, this is an Excel sheet that what we do is we typically have uh, an overriding resolution that says we're adopting these salary changes. Um, and so there are, um, there are quite a few changes and there, and I think that there are some changes that we have discussed that are not in there. So um, it looks to me like, have we discussed the fact that the mayor is asking her salary to be increased? So that um, actually, I, I brought that up to her. She, in the budget book, she put her salary in at 35,000. Um, the, you can't, can't rate, that. yeah, you can't raise or lower, um, a salary. So she's actually just bringing her salary up to what it is statutory, uh, you know what I mean? By law. Right. Right. So the other thing well, that I just want to mention something on that, um, I'm sorry, Judy, just while I'm thinking about it, while you have, well, she has to, for elected officials, you have to put the salary at that level. Um, I'm wondering if there can be a, like we might do a vacancy savings or a offset line in there that would raise it to where it's supposed to be, but have an offset line that would take it down to what she would like it to be. They they actually have that in the Excel oh. spreadsheet. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And now we know that they did it correctly because Richard can, oh. Richard also. <laughs> <laughs> So I just, the other thing I just want to note is that I think that it would be good to send around last year's budget intent memo that we adopted um, to get the juices flowing with regard to even if we don't change anything or if we are changing anything, we want to um, have some sort of explanation in our budget intent memo for what we are doing, including noting that we're gonna be adopting a resolution with some changes and here's some of the reasons why some of these salaries are being changed, um, et cetera. But, um, but 
there, you know, there may be things from last year that we want to reiterate um, or have a little bit further dialogue about what we want to say about that. Um, there was a discussion about um, providing increases and you know having a panel that was going to do increases, uh, you know, review potential increases for um, staff, um, and uh, you know we discussed that. So there's there's that kind of thing that I think that we also ought to be um, talking about. When's our next meeting where we will be taking that up? Because I think people need to be given some deadlines for focusing on this. Uh, Michelle, do you mind looking that up? I was just sending the intent memo from last We're week. having some sort of meeting next Monday before caucus, but. I don't think that that's enough time to actually talk about. Um, right. There's, you know. Um, I believe we have it at the next caucus, right? Or is it, my reminder? That would be the. I think the best time would be November 12th because I'm looking at it, um, some of the discussions that I did, some of the ordinance and resolution I added to November 4th um, and 9th um, meeting, it's gonna be pretty lengthy, it's it's a lot. Um, we're starting to look at the bond ordinance, um, the 9th. Um, so that's something we can add to discussion to that too. I would hope so. Yeah. And if I can just note for that bonding ordinance document, one of the things we should be doing immediately um, with the assistance of Brett and the budget office is inserting anything where there are, um, have been changes to the bonding ordinance since introduction so that we are noting what is being amended with regard to um, account numbers and um, uh, you know, potentially, I don't know, a section numbers of the local finance law and that we usually list that in the right hand column, so, just so that everybody knows. And we have and we have a record mm -hmm. of what is being adopted, because that document then is very helpful to the treasurer's office, and the budget office and the auditor's office in terms of what did we specifically authorize and what do the what goes into the actual bonding documents for their council? Uh, and so, in the past, that has what has been relied on by um, Mr. Shanafar. Sometimes he doesn't one hundred percent get it right, but Okay, are there um, any other points that people want to bring up? Um, big thank you to Richard and Judy for bringing up those pieces so that we can continue to focus on them. So, and Michelle, thank you for sending that around. Um, I definitely encourage everybody to look over the budget and temp memo from last year and start to um, think about your recommendations that you can forward um, to me so we can start to put it together. So everybody have a great night. Um, we'll see you on Monday. Um, next time I will be a lot chipper, more chipper, I hope. And I hope everybody has a really great weekend and a uh, very safe Halloween. Um, thank you. Have a hope good you night. feel better. Yep. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.